Good evening, Mission Control. Well, Mrs. Martian has been using uh, the production lane for a few uh, weeks now, so we have some valuable lessons learned. And what I'd like to do tonight is go over defects. Don't you just love defects? It's the time when you let everyone tell you all the things you did wrong. But here, here's the deal. Okay, bigger plan. Some people are very critical of me. They're like, you like to work too hard. You like to do everything twice. Yeah, that's not true. Uh, I like to work hard. That's true because it makes me feel like I bring value to the world by working hard and producing something. That's a true statement. But I don't like to do things twice. That said, I also don't like to do nothing uh, except for sit and think, which I've seen too many times. Is you can sit there and you can spend all your time thinking and trying to make something perfect and never doing. And by the time you do, someone else has already either done it or you're just too late. It's OBE, overcome by events. So the bluff, the bottom line up front, hitting you with my acronyms tonight, is it's better and more valuable to me to get something done than to get nothing done to try to be perfect, right? So I don't like to do things more than one time. I only like to do it once. I wish I had time to make everything perfect. But quite frankly, I don't know everything, and there's no way I'm going to be perfect ever. So I'm always going to have to redo something. So it's a matter of risk management and what level of risk I'm willing to take. And that's why I do something, and sometimes you guys see me have to go back and do it again. I didn't know something, I didn't know how to do it, um, but I did it anyway. And you know what, I think that's a very valuable characteristic, is I did it anyway. And I've seen it too many times in my life where people tell other people, you can't do something because you don't know how, or somebody else can do it better. That's BS. If you want to do something, you can. Put your mind to it and go. It takes perseverance, it takes a willingness to suffer, you're going to make mistakes, but you go and you keep doing it. And uh, my, my favorite movie quote for this is from Rocky, uh, the newest one, where he goes to his son. He says, yo, life ain't about how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, because that's how winning is done. And to all those folks in Philly right now, I'm sorry, that's the best accent I got. But his statement is, is rock solid. You know, we've been hit a lot in this project, and we keep moving forward. And uh, I think that's a good trait. And even though sometimes that means I do things that I don't know, and I, I make mistakes, I think I learn pretty quickly, and we fix those mistakes, and we keep moving forward. So that's what tonight's about. This is the first round of defects we're going to share with you. So uh, let's start here at the, dr at the end, actually. So one of the first mistakes I made is I really should have doubled the surface area um, of the drying rack. When I did my calculations, I assumed that the surface area would decrease as it went through for what the microgreens, because you're going from microgreens in trays two microgreens laid out, um, and you can stack them a little bit. And while we can stack them, and we haven't fully stacked this all the way yet, it seems like it, it should be a little bit longer. One of the good things is we don't actually need uh, a barrier here when the fans are on. The fans actually don't blow the microgreens away, so that was one of the things we're concerned with. Another defect is this wire mesh. Um, one... I'm not certain it's food grade, so we're going to have to fix that real fast. That's why we're out here tonight. And two, um, when you go to clean it, the microgreens fall down through it, and you end up getting a bunch of stuff down on the rock floor. And someday it would be nice just to put cement down everywhere, but we don't have that money this year. So what we did is we started using a vacuum cleaner to clean this off, but really... I think we need a better surface, and if we're going to keep this surface and go make sure it is food safe, um, then we should put a piece of plastic that goes down like a V and comes back up, so everything that falls through here catches on that, and then you can just tilt it all down and clean it more easily. So that's uh, defect number one and two. Defect number three, which was known up front, but I haven't got to it yet, is we need to put a lid on top of this guy. So you put your bucket in there and then a lid comes down over the top, probably from right back here, and comes out, and that just keeps everything safe. 
So we definitely need to do that. Uh, defect number four is present in both the bubbler as well as the cleaning uh, tote all the way down there. And what the problem is, is that the drain for these totes, while these are food grade and they're meant to be filled with liquid, the drain is at the back there. And it's hard to tell uh, from video, but you might be able to see here. See, that's a hump right there. So it actually humps like this. And we're finding that it won't drain correctly. So what we need to do is we need to put the drain right in the middle and then use, these are working well. These are our catchers, right? I, I grinded this one down so it can fit down in the drain there, but we need to put a drain right here in the middle and then we need to uh, suck, if we're gonna continue to use IVC tote, which I like because they're big containers, um, we need to suck that bottom down. So I think what we need to do is raise it up, uh, raise it up quite a bit, like from here, up to here somewhere so we get spacing underneath of it and then put a drain in the middle and run that pipe over to the drain on the other side at the right height. Uh, let me show you that. There's the drain right there. So if we raise this up to where it's in here somewhere, then we can have a drain underneath of this coming out at the right angle. So I think that's something that we need to do real soon because it is it leaves dirt and grime in there and that's just no good. You don't want dirt, dirt and grime. Uh, another thing that we're gonna be checking on, we're working with the Department of Agriculture on this one is, can you use the PVC pipe in here and the glue? So we contacted the regulators and uh, we're excited because uh, they wanna come out and see what we got going on in a very helpful way. Uh, so uh, please pray for us to get good guidance uh, so far, it looks like we're good, but uh, there's a few things like this PVC that we need to check out. So that might be a defect of itself. Uh, okay, the next defect is same thing. It's over here. Uh, this is the cleaning station, and it has the same drain problem, so we need to fix it. And we also need to trim the top down um, on this. We needed to trim the top anyway because we're constantly bending over. And that's just not going to work. Uh, it hurts the back, especially with me and the lower back stuff. Uh, going to have to fix that. So uh, what we need to do, I think, is raise these up and then trim them. Trim them down so that they're easier to get into. Get the drains underneath of them. And uh, somehow we need to push down uh, here. All right. See how that kind of moves like that? I need to secure that somehow and get it to really suck down. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to think of a different solution altogether and get rid of the IBC totes. So, let's look underneath this thing so you can see uh, kind of what we're gonna to have to work with. Well, that's not good, it's all metal. Uh-oh. That might make it challenging. Have to drill a hole down through the middle of the metal and then somehow we gotta get the plastic to stick to the metal. So maybe stainless steel flathead screws might work. That seems kinda, kinda tricky though. I could put two by fours inside of here, lift it up, that'll create a natural dip in it. Well, let me do it over here. Yeah. So I think if I put two by fours pressure treated on the outside of it, all the way around the edge, the perimeter, so I'll take out the liner, put the two by four perimeter in there, put the liner back in, drill a hole down through the bottom, get a, a threaded drain, like a normal sink drain, and suck that whole thing down. That should create a slope. I think that'll work. I think that's about it. Those are the defects so far. We're actually doing pretty good on defects on the microgreen side. Um, 
Yeah, I can't really, that's it. Those are the defects. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I feel like I'm forgetting something for you guys. Oh, uh, you guys are asking me how come I'm not wearing my back brace all the time. I actually, I really want to comment on this before I close out. Um, my grandfather went to the doctor and they gave him a back brace, back support, belly support, belly hider, beer belly holder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the beer belly basket, I like that one. Uh, and he ended up wearing it too much. And what happened is his core got used to having uh, the brace on all the time and it weakened. Well, if you remember, I told you my core when I got my bulge disc was already weak because I worked the big muscles um, when I'm lifting weights, but I didn't work the little muscles, the core muscles, the Pilates type of thing, you know, um, exercises, I should say. So I don't want to wear a, a belt unless I really need to. I, I want my body to remain strong because I have worked hard to get my core back up to strength. So I wear the belt when I'm doing a lot of repetitive um, twisting and turning because so far it's only been the twisting and turning and lifting all at the same time that have actually resulted in serious pain for me. So when I do like the, the rock moving and all that stuff, I always wear my belt now uh, because there's lots of digging and turning with weight and pressure. And that's where your core can get weak because you're not paying attention. You're like, oh yeah, it's light. I'm just twisting. Oh, there goes my back. So that's the reason why it's probably, I'm probably a little too cautious about it, but you asked me why I'm giving you the honest reason is I don't want my core to get weak and I want my body to keep itself strong as much as is reasonable and possible. Um, as I get older, I'm sure that'll change, but right now that's the reason why. So there's the answer for better or worse. Stubborn me, probably end up hurting myself again. But I don't think so because I do try to really focus on my core and when I move, I try to get that core to be tight first and then I move. And that took a long time in physical therapy to go through. So there you go. That's it. Okay. On that note, this is The Real Martian. Out.